from the Hospital Corman Manual. This is a presentation on Chapter 14, Physical Examinations. This presentation is not all inclusive. This one starts on page 14, tax 16, where it's talking about physical exam testing procedures and equipment. We're going to start with visual acuity. There are three accepted methods for testing visual acuity. We're going to use the Snellen chart, Jaeger cards, and the Armed Forces Vision Tester. The Snellen chart is used to test distant visual acuity. Your Jaeger cards, we use these to test near visual acuity. And our Armed Forces Vision Tester, we can test both distant and near, near visual acuity. The Snellen chart is that common eye chart you're used to seeing in the clinic or the battalion aid station. When we test a patient's visual acuity, we've got to make sure that they are standing 20 feet from the line, right? So when we say somebody has 20-20 vision, we are saying that from 20 feet that they can read line 20 right down here. Also, it needs to be 64 inches from the floor. The 20-20 line needs to be 64 inches from the floor. So right here, we've got to be at least 64 inches from the floor. We're going to test first without corrective lenses and then with. Um, if we're doing a PHA especially, we've got to make sure that they have their prescribed glasses and not contacts because we want to make sure that their prescription is up to date and that they have two pairs of prescription glasses. So uh, we want to go without corrective lenses and then with, and we usually say uncorrected, you know, when we take, when we record the value without and then corrected when we record the value with. Um, we want to document it on block 61 of the DD2808 if we're documenting it on the report of a physical exam. Jaeger cards, like we mentioned, those are for near visual acuity. As you can see, we have six paragraphs, each of a different size. As we go down, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Right, and we, we label the paragraphs. J1 would be the top one, and we'd go all the way down to J6. The patient should hold the Jaeger card 14 to 16 inches from themselves. And we need to document the results of this on block 63 of that DD2808, that physical exam. And the way we would document it is whatever line they could read, we would document that at however many inches, whether it be 14 or 16. So if, for instance, they could read, you know, J2, this line right here at 14 inches, that's how we would document it. Your armed forces vision tester, will this test both near and distal visual acuity? I can also test horizontal and ver uh, vertical phorias. And phorias is a misalignment of your eye that's not obvious when both eyes are open, but if you cover the affected eye, it doesn't maintain the same direction of gaze as the uncovered eye. And we can test for that with our armed forces vision tester. We can also test for uh, stereopsis, our depth perception. Um, and the way we use this, we'd have to refer to the manual for scoring. Our two ways for testing color vision. Well, that will include the Farnsworth lantern test or the phalant and the pseudo isochromatic plates, the PIP. Your Farnsworth lantern test, that is the preferred method of testing and is the method that is prescribed in ManMed chapter 15, and that's our chapter on physical exams. So taking a look at the Farnsworth lantern test, the phalant, the examinee is gonna see two lights in a vertical plane two or three possible color combinations are showed and they're gonna be shown in various combinations. They're gonna be shown in red, we're gonna see green, or we might see a white light. We will see two of those three colors and the examiner will be eight feet away and they will read them from top to bottom. They'll read the two colors that they see and it will be any combination of red, green, or white. A passing score will be a nine out of nine on the first test series. If it's failed, we'd go ahead and administer a series of 18 presentations, and passing that would be either 16, 17, or 18 of these presentations correctly identified. So again, with our phalant, we're gonna have eight feet away. We're gonna read it top to bottom. Two of three color combinations, red, green, or white, will be shown. The initial test, if you get nine out of nine, you pass it. If you fail it, we'll test it again. We'll show you 18 presentations and you just gotta get a 16 to pass it the second time. 
Moving on to our pseudo-isochromic plates or our PIP testing. This is the one you've probably seen in your uh, your battalion aid station or your clinic. It's the one that's usually easier to administer because we just have them look at these different plates with different uh, numbers. And uh, if they can see the numbers, if they can identify the number correctly, then they, they get a point for that. So we have a 14 plate test and we have an 18 plate test. Now, if you're looking on page 14, tax 17, if you're following along, you notice it says an 18 plate test and a 15 plate test. I believe that 15 to be a typo because when we look at the scoring on the bottom, um, it's going to say 14 out of 14. And not only that, if you look in the man med, it refers to a 14 plate test as well. So 14 plate test. Passing is uh, correctly identifying 12, 13, or 14 of the numbers correctly. So the low score on a 14 would be your 12. And then on your 18, passing will be 16, 17, and 18. And the PIP card needs to be held 30 inches away. Okay, moving on from visual testing, let's talk about hearing. So your audiogram, it needs to be calibrated by the uh, American National Standards Institute specifications. We need to document the results of an audiogram and we have three forms we're gonna talk about. We've got the DD2215, which is your reference audiogram. That one's done upon entry. You do that one at MEPS. Any subsequent audiograms, like if you put on the hearing conservation program and you have to do an annual audiogram, that would be done on the DD2216. And that would compare your results to your 2215 and see if there's been any shift in your hearing. And if we are doing a physical, we've got a spot on the 2808 that we'll document it on, and that is in block 71 Alpha and 71 Bravo for each ear. And then for further guidance on the hearing conservation program or hearing conservation data, we can refer to OPNAV 5119. If you haven't watched the SSIC video yet, I suggest you do. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to try to remember all these instruction numbers. But we know that anything 5100 has to do with Navy occupational health and safety. Hearing conservation would obviously fall under that category. And the last piece of equipment we're going to talk about is the electrocardiogram, the ECG or the EKG sometimes as it's referred to. And what this does is it's going to record the electrical impulse that's going throughout your heart. So the standard 12 lead EKG is named because of the electro placement receives and interprets signals from 12 different views. So we're going to go over all the different electrodes and you'll notice that there's only 10 electrodes but we still call it a 12 lead EKG because we get 12 different pictures of the electrical activity of the heart. So the four limb leads and the six uh, precordial leads we've got four limbs that you know four leads that will go onto our limbs and six leads that will kind of surround the heart. All right and from those leads we will be able to get 12 pictures of the electro electrical activity of the heart. Starting with our four limb leads, we've got a lead, a lead on the right arm and the left arm and the right leg and the left leg. We want to put the arm uh, electrodes on the forearm above the wrist and the leg ones we want to put on the calf above the ankle. For the precordial leads, where we have a V1 through V6, our V1 we will start with, we're going to put it on the right sternal border, so right next to the sternum, on the right side, and the fourth intercostal space in between the fourth and the fifth rib. Our V2, we want to put that just across from it on the left sternal border and still in the fourth intercostal space. And then we're going to jump over to our V4. And we're going to put the V4 on the midclavicular line, and we're going to drop down an intercostal space to the fifth intercostal space. And then in between, we can put that V3, and we'll place that V3 diagonally between our V2 and our V4. The V5, well, that's going to go along the anterior axillary line in the fifth intercostal space. And then the V6, well, that's going to be along the mid axillary line and we're dropped down to the sixth intercostal space. So if we take a picture, if we take a diagram of a chest real quick, we'd have our V1 right there, V2, go ahead and put on the V4 and then the V3 in between, our V5 in that uh, fifth intercostal space on that anterior axillary line, and then our V6 and that mid axillary line in the sixth intercostal space. Quick review of what we've gone over so far. 
What are the three ways we test visual acuity? The three ways we test visual acuity, that's the Snell chart, the Jaeger cards for near vision, and then the Armed Forces uh, vision tester. And remember that one can do near and far vision. What are the two ways we test color vision? Well, we've got the Farnsworth lantern test or the, fa the Phalant, and we also got the pseudo isochromatic plates, the PIP. How far off the ground should a Snellen chart be? How far off the ground should a Snellen chart be? Well, we got to make sure that that 2020 line is at 64 inches from the ground. 2020 line is 64 inches from the ground. How far should Jaeger cards be held when testing near vision? How far should our Jaeger cards be held when testing near vision? Well, that's going to be 14 to 16 inches. 14 to 16 inches when testing near vision. In what instruction would you find information on hearing conservation? In what instruction would you find information on hearing conservation? That's going to be in our OPNAV 5119. OPNAV instruction 5119, right? Navy Occupational Health and Safety Manual for Forces Afloat. Okay, well, that concludes this presentation. Uh, like I said, that was just the back half of Chapter 14. I hope this helps, and uh, keep studying.